Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the broadcast of the Anglican Diocese of the Trinity, a diocese of the Church of Nigeria, and part of the Church of Nigeria North American Mission. Our diocese covers United States of America, Canada, and Japan. Our mission is to build a Christ-centered, multicultural, multiracial, Bible-believing church that believes in the apostolic teaching and sensitive to human need. Our vision is to harvest the world for Christ. Feel free to join any of our churches across North America. Or you can reach us at adottcon at gmail.com or bishop at adott.org. God bless you. Welcome again to another edition of Trinity Live, the Echoes of Trinity. And I pray for you again that as we encourage one another, the Lord will speak to you. So whether you are in Africa or in Asia or in North America or in Europe or wherever you find yourself, I just want to tell you this morning, Jesus, or this afternoon or this evening, whatever time zone you are in, that Jesus loves you and he truly cares about you. And if you're a believer in Christ Jesus, the Lord wants you to move forward. You need to move forward. And I pray you will move forward in this year in the name of Jesus. Now I want to talk about things that can slow down your forward movement. Don't forget in the past few weeks we've been talking about moving forward. I laid a foundation to what it means to move forward and how Paul looked at the definition of moving forward, what his desire was, what his primary focus was, cries and cries and cries and cries and cries alone. That was important to him. And of course, pressing on, discipline himself was very important and not just being satisfied with his current states, but willing to move on with God. But this day, we'll have to identify a few things that can slow down your forward movement. Remember, as a believer, you don't have a choice. There are only three options. It's either you're moving forward, you're stagnant, or you're moving backward. Sadly, there is no provision for the last two. You cannot afford to move backwards. And you cannot afford to be stagnant. And so what will help you, what will help your journey, what will help your faith, what will help you is moving forward. So what are things that can slow that down? Well, I want to read from Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15, and I'll read verses 22 to 26. Exodus 15 22 to 26. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water of Mara for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. Verse 26, And said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. 
For I am the Lord who heals you. This is the word of the Lord. A story you are probably familiar with. See, remember it was God that moved them from Egypt to this point. It was God that helped them to move forward. Remember the treads of Pharaoh. Remember the tread of the army of Pharaoh. It was scary for them. God asked them to go. And they went. They were on their way. Only for them to look back and see the mighty army of Pharaoh pursuing them. Ready to take them down. Of course, they were afraid as human. And if the Red Sea is in the front. And Pharaoh's army on the back. How are we going to survive this? What do we need to do in this situation? Of course, God spoke to Moses and the rest is story. They were able to go through the Red Sea. They survived it. But here they are again. They got to a point where they needed water. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. One would have thought that, well, because of the miracle these people have experienced, that's good enough for them. They can trust the Lord. They can depend on Him. That's wonderful. That's great. They should be able to trust God for anything and everything. But we know in this case, that's not what happened. We're told when they got to that place called Mara, the water of that place was bitter. It was bitter. And rather than ask God for a way forward, remember what they said, and the people complained against Moses. Verse 24. And the people complained against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? You see, there was a slight change in their focus. Complain, complain, complain. If there's anything that slows down the forward movement of a believer, it is frequent complaint. Many of us, we complain about everything. You complain about God, why me? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to my son? Why is this happening to my wife? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? We are always and constantly complaining. The people complained against Moses. They complained against God. That God, can't you give us good water? The people complained. If there's anything again that slows down your Christian work, it's murmuring. It's complaining. It's whining. And many believers have lost their lives because of sheer complaint. Of course, when you read the story of the people of Israel, there was so much complaint in their journey. Complain at the Red Sea. Complain after leaving the Red Sea. Complain in the wilderness. No wonder many of them did not make it. Let me say to you this day, my dear brother, complaining will not help you. Rather, it will slow down your forward movement. Rather than complain, what God expects from you is to ask for help. Rather than complain, what God expects from you is to say, Lord, I need your help. I need you. I am faced with obstacle right now. Lord, take me to the next level. And God will take you to the next level. All the Lord is asking from you, all the Lord is asking from me, is to look up to him. My eyes look up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who maketh the heavens and the earth. So number one thing that slows down your forward movement, that slows down the forward movement of any believer, it's unnecessary complaint. Stop whining. Don't be like these people. Of course, God showed mercy. You know, he directed Brother Moses on what he needed to do at that point. And the water was turned into a sweet water for them to be able to drink. But you know, complain, complain, and complain. Number two, things that slow down your forward movement. 
Number two is fear. Number two is fear. Fear and fear. Remember that same Exodus chapter 14. When you look at verse 10, Exodus chapter 14. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. They were afraid. Fear is one of the things that can slow down your forward movement, especially when you look back. In this case, they look back. They saw the army of the enemy. They saw that, oh, wow, it looks like we are going to be consumed. It looks like we're, we're not going to survive it. Sometimes many of you think that way. You think you're not going to survive it. You think, well, no, you're not going to be able to go through that situation. That situation is going to overwhelm you. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh, I can never survive it. Fear creates a lot of things in you. And then you think, well, yo, there's no way I'm going to make it. There's no way I'm going to get to the next level. There's no way this is going to happen. There's no way that is going to happen. Fear. Unnecessary fear. But let me remind you, because the scripture tells us, the antidote to that. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. God has not given you, God has not given me, as a believer, the spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of sound man. Therefore, you need not be afraid. Yes, we know Pharaoh may be coming behind. The Red Sea may be in the front. Yes, we know the wind might be blowing. The flood may be around. Maybe the rain is coming from the top. The wind is blowing around you. And the flood is coming from underneath. Let me say to you in plain language, you will not be consumed. It is not over for you. Don't allow fear to hinder you from moving forward. So number one thing that slows down forward movement of any believer is complain, complain, and complain. Number two is fear. Number three is disobedience. Disobedience. Disobedience not following the instruction as God has given to us. Not doing what the scripture tells us to do. Disobedience. We know that. And we are told clearly in the scriptures. Disobedience will definitely destroy. Disobedience will hinder you from moving forward. But let me read to you Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1 verses 19 and 20. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. But if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Let me be clear to you. Disobedience will slow down your forward movement. If you refuse to obey the Lord, then you cannot move forward. Only those who are willing and obedient can move forward. You know the story of our brother Saul. He was disobedient. You know, what God said to him was very clear. Destroy, get rid of the Amalekites completely. The instruction was very clear, but he tried to manipulate it. He thought God, well, how could God mean that? How can God do that? And that's a good example of what disobedience can do to a man. And that's what disobedience can do to someone who has chosen not to obey what God says to him. Saul is a clear example of a man who disobeyed God. Saul is a clear example of a man who did not do what God asked him to do. And when he was confronted with it, you all know, he tried to make excuse, he tried to justify it, 
you know, he tried to say, well, you know, uh, this is what happened. This is the situation. Well, you know, but so, you know, let me just try to do something else. Brothers, sisters, as we continue in this race, disobedience will cost us many things. Disobedience caused brother Saul, King Saul, I'll say his throne. And remember when Nathan confronted him, the word of the Lord was very clear. When Nathan confronted David, I mean, we know what it was for brother David. Of course, we know what it is for brother Samuel when he confronted Saul. And that is the danger. That is the danger of disobedience. Let me read 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 9 and 10. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 9 and 10, and verses 22 and 23. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatling, the lambs, and all that was good, but were unwilling to utterly destroy them. For everything despised and worthless, they utterly destroyed. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I'm going to jump to verse 22. So Samuel said, As the Lord had great delight in bond offering and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of ram. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord he also has rejected you from being king can't you see the cost the cost for brother Saul for King Saul in this case the cost of disobedience God simply says destroy all God simply says go into this battle do this and I don't know what the Lord is telling some of you, but you have chosen to be disobedient. But I tell you, you cannot move forward until you obey the Lord. You cannot move forward until you do what God is asking you to do. You cannot move forward until you exercise obedience that is required. Remember, to obey is better than sacrifice. Things that can slow down your forward movement. Number one, complain. Number two, fear. Number three, disobedience. And finally, number four, self-satisfaction and, and consciousness of the enemy. Self-satisfaction and consciousness of the enemy. That's what you see for the people of Israel in that Exodus that we read to you earlier. You see, they were conscious of the enemy. They were afraid and they thought, wow, the enemy is going to overrun us. The enemy is going to kill us. The enemy is going to do this. The enemy is going to do that. But God is a faithful God. Don't let the enemy scare you. Self-satisfaction and consciousness of the enemy. Of course, we don't have to be ignorant of the devices of the wicked one. That is very true. But when you become unnecessarily conscious, you know, in everything is the devil. In everything you think is there. And so you live in fear. You live in bondage. You feel that, well, you cannot move forward. When you continue to live in that point of self-satisfaction, you think you have arrived. You think, well, look, I've gotten everything. I'm a mature believer. I don't need anything else again. That's dangerous. That will slow down your forward movement. It will prevent you from trusting God. Let me remind you again. The people of Israel, they saw the enemy behind. That almost crippled them. It almost prevented them from trusting the Lord. When you are necessarily conscious of the enemy and you give the enemy the upper hand, remember Elisha said it clearly to his servant, don't worry. They that are with us there are more than they that are with them. Remember that scripture, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when God opened the eyes of the, the servant of Elisha, 
He saw the hosts of heaven surrounding them. And that initially he was afraid. He was scared because he was conscious of the enemy. But now when he can see God in action, his orientation changed. Brothers, sisters, don't let any of these things slow down your forward movement. We are saying to you, God wants you to move forward in your life, in your home, in your spiritual walk with him. But don't allow any of these things. Complain, fear, disobedience, consciousness of the enemy and just self-satisfaction. Let none of this hinder you. My prayer for you, again and again, you will move forward. You will move forward in every aspect of your life in the name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads to pray. Lord, we pray that you will help us, that we will not give in to fear. We will not give in to complain. We will not give in to disobedience. We will not give in to self-consciousness of the enemy. But rather, our focus will be on you. And that nothing will hinder our forward movement. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See?